Good morning, Calvary Baptist Church. It's good to have you here this morning. I'm glad you came for worship. But first, there are a few announcements you really need to put on your calendar. So listen up close. Here they come. If you are on a ministry team or especially chairing a ministry team and you have not got your budget in, shame, shame, shame. You need to get that budget in ASAP or you will get no M-O-N-E-Y because you're late. That's why. Give then. If you've walked into the church and haven't come through the fellowship, then you probably haven't noticed the table that's stacked pretty high with a bunch of red and green shoe boxes. It's our Operation Christmas Child. We've picked up 200 shoe boxes, and I believe there's about 100 of them already gone. So we have a little less than 100 more to get out, fill up, bring back. We'd love to have all 200 shoe boxes back by November the 8th which is a Wednesday. The postage been paid for by a blessing from God. So all you have to do is get a couple of boxes, fill them up, put the tags on there. We'll do everything else. Please don't take the box and not bring it back. You'll be robbing a kid of a blessing for this Christmas. So take a box or two, fill them up, bring them back by November the 8th. Well, hey there, all you treasure hunters. We got an announcement for you. Coming up the 27th and 28th, that's next Friday and Saturday. Yee dog it! There's going to be some treasures to hunt at Calvary Baptist Church. And if you're a member of Calvary Baptist Church, a special yee doggy early day hunt for you on the 26th. So if you're a member, you can come and graze through acres and acres of treasures. If you just want to announce it to your friends, they can come the 27th and 28th. There'll be appliances, TVs, cowboy hats, anything you want to bless somebody some good Christmas shopping right here at Calvary Baptist Church. You come now, you get some. Coming up on October the 29th, the last Sunday of the month, we've got a couple of very special guests. Really, it's a family. It's Blue and Darby Tidwell, and their family will be here. They are missionaries over at New Day Orphanage over in Africa. A couple of years ago, we sent them enough money to put in a water well at the village that they're at. They're going to be coming here and telling us what's going on at New Day Orphanage and how blessed they have been by the blessings we've given them. So please come and receive a blessing from Blue and Darby Tidwell, October 29th in both services. And oh, by the way, there's so much stuff. It's all the way over here in the band hut. So make sure you spread the word. Come to the treasure hunt. That's all the announcements we got for this morning, and I know you wrote every one of them down. So now it's time for worship. I hope you came with an open heart to receive God's word. Let's get up and worship. God bless you. You know, for as much as Steve not liking the Cowboys, he sure does make a good cowboy. Why don't you stand up? Let's greet one another this morning. Rise 
Good to have you here this morning. Man, welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to our live stream family out there. Just a couple of things you might not have caught in the announcements. Yeehaw. Uh, the boot is still at the Welcome Center. That's $5. Feeds one kid four meals. We got this Sunday and next before we're done with that campaign. And don't forget, next week, John's got a couple of items for the treasure hunt. Just a couple. I think it's like three or four housefuls of treasures. Good Christmas gifts. Hint, hint. So you want to come by next week and be blessed and help the students raise money for all their camps and, and events they're going to be going to ne- next year. So uh, g- glad to have you here. I know some of you might have not known there was a hailstorm that blew through from around Seagraves area up around and got some farmers here. So lift our farmers up in prayer. Hopefully their crop might have missed that hail. And those who didn't, uh, please lift them up in prayer. It's going to be a tough harvest. Uh, a lot, lots going on. I appreciate all of you that are coming here this morning ready to worship. Uh, if you're visiting for the first time, that's in our bulletin. It says, Welcome Guests. Fill that out. Take it to our Welcome Center for a gift from us. If you have a prayer request, please fill that out. Put it in the offering plate. We'll be happy to pray over that request as well. One of the things talking about praying is we do, and that's what we do is pray. We pray as, as a group, as a corporation, as a family, and we pray individually. And so Kim and I are going to be down here up front. You are welcome to come join us in prayer. You're welcome to sit right where you're at and pray as well. But understand this, we're all in the family of God, so let's make sure we reach out to somebody and invite them to pray with us. Let's go before the Lord right now in prayer. this morning and I pray that God as we begin our worship time God that you would just uh, open up our hearts and our eyes to see and hear what it is you have to tell us help us to lift you up with honesty and just be genuine this morning in your name I pray amen children it's your time to come on down yeehaw come on down I got a prize for what am I doing man I ain't no cowboy I don't even know what it means to be a cowboy Come on down. What do I have, Ash? Your puzzle. This is it. This is it. Come on, Teddy. We need a guy down here. Yay. All right, guys. What do I have in my hand? Pieces to a puzzle. So here's my question about y'all. Look around and look at each other. Do any of y'all look exactly alike? Hallie, you don't look like? Isn't that a good thing? There's only one of you. Can you believe that? There's only one of you on the entire planet. Just like these puzzle pieces. You know what? There's only one piece that looks like this. There's only one piece that looks like that. It'd be silly if you got a puzzle and every one of them looked exactly the same. So what if everybody got a piece of the puzzle and I kept this one and hid it? And you you guys like, where's the last piece? You wouldn't have a complete puzzle, would you? Because I had the missing one. But you know what? Each and every one of you are different. So listen to what the Bible says about being different. So in Christ, when you have Christ in you, though there are many of you, you form one body. The body of Christ. There's many of y'all. And y'all are different. Just like these puzzle pieces are different. But they form one puzzle. You guys are different. But in Jesus Christ, you form one body. And so you don't have to worry about forming other bodies for other gods or anything. You get to worship one God. So maybe when you go to school tomorrow and there's a friend of yours who's not having a good day, you can tell them, hey, you matter. You make a difference. If this piece of puzzle wasn't there, you wouldn't have a complete piece. So it matters that they're all there. Now this is Ashlyn's puzzle. And I'm going to take a piece and put the rest in there so she won't have a complete puzzle. No way she'd get on to me. So remember... All of you all together, make the body of Christ, okay? All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you for the boys and girls that come together who make up your body of Christ, your believers. 
May they go and share that word with others who think their lives don't matter. We ask in your name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. glad that we are all the body of Christ. There's not one of us that stands out more than the other. We need to be that light for the world. Go ahead and stand up if you want to work with us.
Father God, I pray that we would mean those words. God, that you are all that we need. And it doesn't matter what storm we go through in life and what ways that you may break us down or test us, Father, or what ways Satan may tempt us, we would have faith and we would trust in you because you're all that we need. Thank you for being the one unique God that you are, unlike any other God. Thank you for making us unique as well. Amen. I tell you, I don't know about you, but worship sure has set the tone for what's going on. And He is all that we need. He's the only one we need. I mean, maybe you needed somebody to wake you up this morning. Maybe you needed somebody to encourage you that you're a good person, you're doing good things. But truly, God is the only one we need, and that's why we're here this morning, to let Him know that we need Him as well. It's just like our live stream family. I've got this picture up here. I don't know if your face is in there. Probably not, because I don't know who it is, but it's just a group of people. And they might, might, might not matter a hill of beans to you, but to them they do, because their face is in there. And that's why I've kind of titled this, Do I Matter? We've been taking a journey about who am I, and you notice it's all lowercase i, it's not a capital I, because we should know the great I, capital I, I am, but we're the lowercase. We're trying to find out in this short thing called life who we are, where we're going to go, and do I matter? You've read in there, I'm going to be in Romans chapter 8 today. If you've already read Romans 8, well, we're going to read it again. If not, you're in luck because I'm going to read it for you. But taking this journey about finding out, one, who I am, and this one is a little more deeper. Do I matter? Do I matter in this whole big giant world of billions of people? Do I matter? And then you take this world and you start segmenting it down to the United States, to Texas, to Terry County, to Brownfield, to 402, to the Pew. That's you. And it gets really, really insignificant almost in this whole giant world that God would see you. Well, believe me, He does. He sees you. And if you're wondering what the answer to do I matter is, it's yes. You matter. Just like Davion. Davion mattered. Davion's a 15-year-old boy. I know that because I read an article about him this past summer. And Davion was a product of the foster care system. And Davion was tired that he had not been adopted yet. But you just heard, why not? He's a 15-year-old boy. And talking to his caseworker, he says, what is the deal? I'm a good boy. And his caseworker said, but Davion, you're 15. The older you get, the harder it is to get you adopted. He goes, well, what are we going to do? Which is why I'm, I'm sure we need to pray about this. And so they prayed right then and there. And then Davion said, Amen. And he raised up. He goes, I got the answer. When I go to church this Sunday, I'm going to walk the aisle and ask the pastor if I could speak for a minute. She goes, Well, sure. Sure enough, Sunday come and Davion comes down at invitation. He whispers something to the pastor and the pastor nods his head. And then when they're all done, he hands the mic to Davion and Davion gets up. And this is what Davion says. He goes, my name is Davion, I'm a 15-year-old boy, and I've grown up in the foster care system since birth. My mom abandoned me, I don't know who my dad is. But I know this, my God has never abandoned me, and I matter to him, and he matters to me. He goes, I want to be adopted. I'm a good 15-year-old boy. And he said this, it doesn't matter to me if you're old or if you're young. It doesn't matter to me if you're just a dad or just a mom. It doesn't matter to me if you have three kids or no kids. What matters to me is that I would be loved by somebody knowing that I matter to them. There's not a person in here this morning that doesn't want to matter to somebody. You matter to somebody. Now, I know there are times, and I'll speak directly to parents and grandparents, there are times those kids make you a little bit upset and, and you want to shoo them away, but it doesn't matter what they do, you still love them. I'll say it again, it doesn't matter what those kids do, and that kid means, it doesn't matter what that kid does, you still love them. They might be out on their own, they might be whooping the world. 
and you still love them. That world might have whooped them over and over and over again, but you still love them. Doesn't matter what they do, you still love them. And Davion was just crying out, I'm, I'm just a good kid. I, I want to matter to someone. And being a true story, it does end happily. He was adopted. And it was very difficult to, to weed out the ones because over the next weeks, of course, the church talked about Davion and then the news heard about Davion and Davion got interviewed and then they broadcasted it out. And, and it says there, no less than 10,000 inquiries came back across the United States of people wanting to adopt Davion. You want to know if you matter. Do I matter? Am I just a face in the crowd? That puzzle over here matters that every piece is there. Just real quick, have you ever put one together and one missed? Oh, that one piece matters. Let me just say this morning, worship service is good that you're here because you matter. Worship service would not be the same if you were not here today. You matter that much. When you walk out that door, you matter to this place called Brownfield in Terry County. You make a difference in it. We have a number of farmers out today because the hail did come through and they're, they're kind of upset. And they might even be standing out in a, in a, in a wheat, uh, excuse me, in a cotton field going, God, don't I matter? I was, I had the machine at the end of the row. I was getting ready to fire it up. We were going in and what, don't I matter? And I think I, if I could tell them today, please tell them if you see them. You matter so much to me. You matter so much to me. I, I need you to trust me now that I know what I'm doing. I need you to trust me now. You matter so much to me. I know your crop might be gone, but you matter so much to me that you have to trust me. I know what I'm doing. There's not a one of us here that might have had a battle with trust somewhere in our life. Somebody might have lied to us, didn't fall through on their word. I, I promise you, and then the promise got broken. And you had to trust them again as they came back into your life, and that was hard. Maybe there was a relationship. Maybe there was a child or, God forbid, a teenager that broke their word. And you had to trust them again when you found out they broke their word. But as I said, I'm in the book of Romans this morning, chapter 8. If you don't have it, I'm going to read for you. There's a... 11 verses here, they're kind of long, so just kind of journey with me and we'll take a pause at the very first one here. Therefore, there is now no. That's the first word a kid learns how to say, by the way, because they hear it so much. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So church, I'm going to get my voice a little higher here and say, then why do we condemn our brothers and sisters when they stumble? This tells me I am not to condemn my brother and sister who stumbles, who's, who are in Christ Jesus, who somehow misses the step and falls into the muck and mire, who backslides, who fell back a little bit, who took a drink, took a snort, took a hit, took a lie, took whatever, and we condemn them. It tells me very clear there are, there's now no, it doesn't say some, we're not supposed to condemn some people and some not. It doesn't even say now, now for there is a little condemnation. No, we're not supposed to make them the backside of our joke when they stumble. When they back up over the fire hydrant, when they run through the fence, when they fail to get their car in the garage far enough and the garage door comes down. And we make them the, the center of our joke. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. You've been set free from sin and death. You've been set free from sin and death. I want you to remember that. For what the law was, for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, us, God did by sending His own Son into the likeness of sinful flesh, to be a sin offering. And so he condemns sin in the flesh. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, 
Those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of God, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even through your body, though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. Over and over and over again it tells us, if the Spirit of God is in you, then you live. You're not, you're not bound by sin anymore. I don't know if you've known somebody, if it's even you, that's, I just can't stop I just can't take hold of my tongue. Oh, my mind runs rampant sometimes and I'm in just fear of... Well, there's, there's two things that stop us from living a full life. Shame and fear. We are shamed by one another. And we are fearful of what they think and say about us. And if I were here today hoping to please you, I'd be afraid that I wouldn't but I'm not here to please you. If I was here today hoping that, oh man, I, I hope they like my new winter haircut that I did yesterday. I hope they like my new fall suit that, that, that color looks just like fall weather and not the longhorns. Not that I'd be bragging about those raiders or nothing, but anyways, then I would fall short. I'm not here, I... Galatians 1.10, get in there, find it, mark it, live by it. And it says this, evidently you think I'm here to please you. I'm not. I'm here to be a servant to the Lord. If I was here to please you, then I wouldn't be a servant to the Lord. That's why I'm here. I'm here to serve the Lord. I, the praise team isn't here to please you. They're here to praise God. That's why they're here. Davion needed a family. Needed him to know that he mattered. Who here wants to go through the rest of your life wondering, has anybody, if I were just to step aside, would anybody know I'm gone? I mean, really, what adult hasn't thought, what, what difference have I made in this world? If God were to call me away, would, would anybody go, hmm? Eh? Who hasn't thought it? Who hasn't thought that, that I want to matter? We are here in church today because truly, not just we, we want to be fed the word, we want to matter. Do I matter? Yes, you matter. You matter more to him than anything else, anyone else on the planet. Not your spouse or your children. You matter more to God because he sent his one and only son to show you how much you matter to him. To take who was not sin, our sin. And think about it. Those weren't your arms stretched out on that cross. Those were his. But also get this. That was your sin he took, not his. He was not sin. He was made sin for you. You don't have to crawl up on the cross. Oh, I stumped my toe. Oh, I, could, well, I better beat myself again. I'm, I'm worthless. I'm no good. You don't have to do that. We live under that amazing thing called grace now. That by the grace of God he came to fulfill the law to take our sins to the cross that we don't have to be crucified and yet sometimes we go through this thing called a day wondering oh man do I matter the car battery died hey God don't I matter to you my car battery died and God's like it's been going er, 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 for a month now you kind of got a hint hey God my tires flat you've been airing it up every day for a week now I've been giving you a hint and yet we blame God for the things he's been reminding his children of what to do. I'll tell it again. My dad, who loved me dearly, would always tell me, Steve, don't park your bike behind the car anymore. I'm tired of moving it. Oh, whatever. Until the one day happened. 
it was, it was flat. It was mangled. I'm like, what? What, you dad? He goes, hey, that was my bike that I gave you. And if you didn't take care of it, it must not have meant nothing to you. Did God not give you a life? Didn't he tell you to rest well each night? Take those burdens off. Don't live under stress and sin. Rejoice in me always. And yet sometimes we wake up unhappy that we slept in a bed with a pillow and a blanket over us. We wake up unhappy because there was no homemade cinnamon rolls in the oven. God, I had to go into that Sunday school again and eat all their donut holes to save them from gaining weight. God. And yet we're unhappy about things. You matter so much to him, and yet I, I just wonder in our lives, why do we keep on yelling out, God the creator, aren't you listening to your creation? Do I matter? And he's like, you do matter. You matter so much to me that on this entire planet, you mean more to me than anything else I created, and I created it all. I created this earth, this planet, this atmosphere for you to live comfortably in. Some days you might sweat, some days you might be cold. But I love you so much. You matter so much to me. Dr. Bernine Brown, she was a researcher and a storyteller. Kind of interesting combination. I didn't know this until I actually got on YouTube and found it. But she does TED Talks, T-E-D Talks. You'll have to get on there and pull them up. She did a TED Talk about sh shame and fear. And thought, well, maybe there'd be a couple 300. Maybe watch it. To date, there's almost 11 million views. So what she said was pretty interesting. But here's just a small snippet about am I worth anything? Do I matter? She said, from rich and famous to the poorest of the poor in the world, no matter what it is on the plight of the human beings, understand this. It goes back to the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve. It's called sin. It's called sin. And there are us who stumble into it, who step into it, who waller into it, who got a hold of it and fell into it. And we don't have to anymore. Jesus, who was sinless, took our sins to the cross. We don't have to. But St Steve, oh, I, I got a temper. No, you want to have a temper. Well, Steve, my great granddad did, my granddad did, my dad did, so I have to. No, you don't. You choose to. Well, Steve, my great-granddad was a whiskey drinker. My granddad was a whiskey drinker. And so I have to. No, you don't. You choose to. You don't have to sin. He has given you a way out. He has given you a way out. So what if you have to run? Then run. So what if you have to tell a friend, I'm sorry, I can't be your friend anymore. I can't be around you anymore. I'm a drug addict, I'm an alcoholic, and that's all you do is drink and do drugs, so I can't be around you anymore. Instead of saying, well, they're my friend. Well, you might be their friend, but they're not your friend. And sometimes in our lives, folks, it goes back to the Garden of Eden when you yell out, who am I? I'm a child of God. Do I matter to Him? You are priceless to Him. Absolutely priceless to Him. And reading through those scriptures that said this, those who are in Christ Jesus, you've been given the power of the kingdom to resist the temptation. I mean, real quick, in our, in our minds, have we ever said, I'm going I'm to not do that anymore? Have those words ever crossed through your mind? I'm not going to do that anymore. And all of a sudden, somehow, it happened. Now, I have never said, I'm not going to eat chocolate anymore. That'd just be a lie. But I have a basket of chocolate in my office. And nine times out of ten, it's full. I put a nice creepy spider in the middle of it to keep people from snagging all they do and smack it away and get my candy. There's a reason for this. Now, if I was to hide my candy and nobody knew that I had candy in there, then nobody would knew that I would eat that candy. But if I put that candy out in the middle where everybody can see, and all of a sudden they come in there one day and it's still the same amount, like, hey man, you're not eating. No, I'm, I want to make sure that I'm tempted. I look at it. I look it in the eye. I'm not going to hide my temptation. 
And there's many of us here that, that, that put that blank, black, that black, black blanket over that sin so nobody will see it except me. That means they won't know I'm sinning. I'll just bring it out in the open. I always tell people Satan can't throw a rock unless you give him a rock to throw. So take that rock away. I know this is going to make your head kind of blow up because you never expected to hear this name in church. But has anybody ever heard of a former singer by the name of Whitney Houston? Nobody, huh? Yeah. Well, she passed away at the expense of her own hand through a drug overdose in 2012. And at her funeral, another famous actor by the name of Kevin Cosner spoke there. This is an excerpt of what Kevin said. You know, Whitney and I worked together in a movie and I knew her as a friend. We were really actually, we really actually had a lot in common. I know you won't believe this, but we both grew up in the Baptist church. I didn't know that. We both grew up knowing what was best or the best place for us, what the best values were to learn and the best relationship to have was God's. We even learned that God had a plan for our lives. Then he goes on to say this. But somewhere along the line, Whitney took the wrong road. I remember being at one of her concerts and she sang in front of thousands and thousands and thousands of people and she came running off stage, looked me in the eye and said, did they like me? Was I pretty enough for them? Was I good enough for them? Church, I'm not here for you to like me or be pretty for you or good enough for you. I'm here for one, and that's God. That's God. You were here to make a difference for God. And in making that difference for God, I pray it filters over to your family, your children, your friends, your strangers. Because you never know when God's going to show up. And I'll throw a little story about a dryer. A church member's dryer went out. And you think, oh my gosh, that can't be good. God uses the craziest things. So they found a dryer somewhere between Lubbock and Idaloo in that vicinity. And went over there and got to talking about stuff. And God entered the picture and talking about God. And at the end, this man says, hey man, would you mind if we just got together and prayed real quick? All because their dryer went out. That prayer might have made the difference in that man's life that moment. That, hey man, maybe he was praying, God, is there anybody out there who loves you? You might not think of these things, but as a pastor, I, well, just me. God's got a plan for everything, for the hailstones that fell yesterday. God's got a plan. For, for your life right now, for the aches and pains that you're in, for the little struggles that you're going through, for Whitney Houston that was on the right road, she sang in the choir, but she took the wrong road. This is what Kevin ended his eulogy with. He goes, I saw a little girl who sang in the choir reduced to her fears and shames of what other people thought of her. Reduced to fear and shame. Folks, if you're here to please people, let me just tell you real honestly, you'll always let them down. Always. We are here to please one, our Creator, our Heavenly Father, who, because He loves us so much, sent His one and only Son. And truly, in the eyes of God, when we make that mistake, it's, I love you, Let's see if we can try that again. I love you, but don't do that again. And here's my discipline for that. I love you. There's a person out there that needs to hear me through you. That's why I'm going to have your dryer break. I love you. Think about where you're at today. Think about somebody who is on that right road, who teethed on the back of the pew. And now you're wondering, where'd they go? We do have something called a free will. And it is a driving force in all of us, this free will. The will to say yes, the will to say no. And many of us say yes when we know we should say no. 
we should stand a little bolder for that no. Because that person wanting us to go down that, that road of twists and turns, they're not out for our best interest. But God is. And you matter so much. And so let me just ask you, you need to be, we always say, I need, I'm just too vulnerable. You need to be extremely vulnerable to people. Because the more walls and the more steel and armor you put up to fight the enemy, you're also fighting off that one that needs to see your heart. To know that you've stumbled. That, man, this is, where I, this is who I was. I read an amazing one-line statement this week. Your past is not your present. Think about that for a second. Your past is not your present. I don't want to be who I was ever again. And so that doesn't define me who I am. My present defines me who I am. I love Jesus Christ. My present defines who I serve. I serve Him unashamedly. Unashamedly. And so the, the question I, I have to leave you with this morning is more of just a gut question. You matter so much to God. The question is, does He matter to you? Does he matter to you? Would you stand with me, please? Father, we come before you this day, the creator of the day, the one who let the hailstones fall yesterday on the crops, and yet you still love each and every farmer that might be upset at you. We come to you today, Father, the one who put strength in our bodies and breath in our lungs. And we complain to you about this day. We can't imagine how much we matter to you, but God, do you matter anything at all to us? Are you just the crisis God that we go to until it's all fixed and back to normal and then we push you back in the closet? How much do you matter to us? It should be every single day. When we see such an amazing explosion of sunrise come and yet we're too busy to raise our head up and see it. When we lay our head on the pillow, it's within seconds we're asleep instead of giving you thanks for the day that you allowed us to walk in. Do I matter? I matter so much to you. You sent your one and only son. So Father, this morning as we sing invitation to you, maybe there's one here that wants to let you know that you matter to them. The aisles are completely open. The altar's open, Father. We ask you to humbly come in and change us today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray this. Amen. these words are actually meaning something to you and that it's not just words of a chorus of a song because we're going to sing it again and ask the Holy Spirit to come and touch and maybe for the first time you're going to ask yourself does God really matter to me
Our most gracious Heavenly Father, I uh, thank you for this day that you've given us, Father God, and I thank you for the message provided by Brother Steve. And Lord, I thank you for creating each and every one of us individually, Lord, and I, I thank you for the uh, opportunity that you've given each and every one of us to have a relationship with you, Father God, and I pray that each and every one of us have that relationship with you and that we live our lives for you. And Father, I pray that we follow your word and follow your wisdom in each and everything we do in our lives. And uh, as we go into this time of offering, Father God, I just pray that we'll use it to further your kingdom. Keep us safe as we travel home. We love you and we praise you. In your great name I pray. Amen. Go ahead and stand and grab a hand. Let's sing on out of here. <laughs> 